Today, I'll talk about the most famous real number in the world, pi. But is pi as real as concrete or as unreal as our Pythagoras pop soda? Today, you'll know the answer. And this is math. Hi, welcome. Today I'll be starting with an experiment. For that, Mr. Leonardo gave us a bit of string and lent us his lunchbox. Let's do some math. First, we circle an orange with a piece of string. Another string with the same length as the first piece plus a meter, we shape a circle and place the orange at the middle, thus forming a circumference considerably larger than the fruit. Between this circle and the orange, there's a 15 centimeters gap. Now let's do the same with our planet. Imagine that Mr. Leonardo has enough string to circle the Earth. If we add a meter to this string and shape a circle around the Earth, what would be the gap between the string and our planet? Keep that in mind while I look for some pie inside that lunchbox. Mr. Leonardo enjoys our pop soda. If we measure this soda can circumference, then the diameter, and then divide its perimeter by its diameter, we get a figure around 3.1. The same happens if we use that same math on this tire. In the end, we get a mysterious 3.14. I've scaled up a bit and did exactly the same with Lisbon's bull ring cover. Can you guess the result? As you can see, whenever we divide the circumference by a circle's diameter, we always get this number, whatever size is the circle. To put in another way, the perimeter of the circle is equal to its diameter multiplied by the number 3.14. And this is one of the world's most famous constants, pi. Now, let's find out where the worksite's cutest pi is at. Okay, so what is this constant? We know that the true value of pi has an infinite number of decimals and that they are not periodically repeated. Apparently, they just pop up randomly. Pi is an irrational number. Both irrational and cute as the little guy guarding this worksite. But how to calculate pi without using oranges, paint cans or the huge and high bullring cover? You are probably accustomed to hearing that pi is equal to 3.14, but in fact, this is only an approximation. Of course that today, humanity has all kinds of calculating machines, but I'll soon show you how to calculate pi old school. To calculate the real pi, start with 4, subtract 4 thirds, then add 4 fifths, subtract 4 sevenths, add 4 ninths, and so on. On doing so, you'll get a number increasingly similar to the real pi. Unfortunately, the screen and our time are not infinite. To obtain the true value of pi, you'd have to continue doing this to the infinity. Actually, there are some folks who use supercomputers to calculate more and more and more 
more decimal places of pi. I present to you Pi's first 3000 decimal places. This dog is also named Pi, but just because he likes to eat them. Morning! Today, the record for known Pi's decimal places is about 10 trillion. But is there any practical use on knowing so many decimal places? And the answer is… Probably not. Knowing all these decimal places of pi has roughly the same use of knowing how many grains of sand will be part of this concrete. Oh, and by the way, this mixer also has pi. And now the answer to the initially raised problem. The gap between the string and the orange is around 15 centimeters. Now, how much space is between the string and our planet? If your answer was 15 centimeters, you're right. Incredibly, the gap between the string and the Earth is the same as between the string and the orange. Why? Because the diameter of a circle is equal to its circumference divided by pi, regardless of size. And this is math. 